Hi everyone, Evan Alexander here with another tutorial. Today we're going to branch out of Vectorworks a little bit and we're going to start talking about Cinema 4D, the other half of the equation in my work life. Um, today we're going to just look at getting geometry out of Vectorworks and into Cinema 4D. So you've spent all this time putting together your packet and now you're ready to move things over and uh, you know maybe do some renderings or some lighting studies. So here's a few kind of tips and tricks to get you started and pointed in the right direction. I'm in Vectorworks 2021 here, nothing fancy. I'm in top plan view. I've just drawn a rectangle and a circle here, nothing fancy. And let's go ahead and just extrude this up here. And uh, we'll extrude this one as well. We'll do this 12 feet here. So we just have made some really basic uh, 3D geometry here. That's it. Nothing too crazy. Okay. So to get out of Vectorworks, we want to say File, Export, Export to Cinema 4D, 3D only. This is my go-to. I use this all the time, and I've actually even built it into my right-click menu so that I can, at any time, just grab it right out, right from out here. I've just built that into my workspace. Um, no need to, but if you start doing this a lot, this can be super handy. Uh, I want to point out that there is, in the file menu, a thing called Send to Cinema 4D, and I'm not a huge fan of this one. It will push your geometry over. It will launch Cinema 4D for you and open it up. I don't like that so much. I think it's letting the computer kind of think too much. I want to say export Cinema 4D 3D only. This is going to just basically write a file for us that we can then import into Cinema and kind of work from there. So my preferred method, um, try out the other one if you're curious about that. So let's say export Cinema 4D. And a dialog box will pop up. So render mode, final quality render works. So this is basically showing us um, kind of quality settings for the geometry that we're exporting. Because we are going from, you know, basically NURBS here, right? Uh, math formulas, vector connecting points together. And Cinema 4D is working with polygons. And so it has to convert and it's trying to figure out, you know, how fine does it break up the geometry? We're going to leave this right now for final quality render works. Um, and I think that's okay. We're going to do this a few times. So we'll look at this a little bit more carefully. Um, and then it's asking you what you want to export. So all visible objects on all layers. So uh, that's usually good. There's only one layer here, so we don't have too much going on. But if you have multiple layers, uh, multiple classes, you're working on a big show with a venue and scenery or multiple sceneries, um, then you can, you can grab it all. Basically, it just uh, relies on your Vectorworks visibilities to define it. So if you have a layer that's hidden or a class that's hidden, that geometry won't come along with, for the ride. So you can kind of control it that way. Uh, scene organization. So I always stick with native Vectorworks organization. So this is basically saying, how is everything going to be ordered once we get into Cinema 4D? You can totally play around with these and see which one fits your workflow best. Maybe you do want things sorted by class or texture, or fill color. Basically, what that means is if you say sort by class, everything that's in you know class A will be in a folder together in that uh, um, in cinema, like in its one folder. Everything that's in class B will be in its own folder. Uh, I like to just keep things kind of laid out the way that it is in Vectorworks. And then it wants to know, what are we including? So geometry, cameras, lights, backgrounds. I don't have any of this stuff in here. If you do use lights and materials inside of Vectorworks, you can absolutely move those over into Cinema. Um, I usually tend to just do my modeling in Vectorworks. So I have the geometry and I can make packets and sheets and notes from that. And then things like textures, lighting, cameras, I do 
all of that in Cinema 4D. But um, if you don't, if you definitely are into render works, but you want to move this to cinema, you can choose to bring along all of these things with you as well. Today, we just want the geometry. So I'm going to say export, and then it's going to ask me uh, for uh, a file here to save. So we'll just call this, we'll call this test2, and we'll save. That's it. It wrote the file. Bigger files might take a little bit longer, but that's okay. Let's jump over to Cinema. So now I'm in Cinema 4D Release 25. Uh, if you're using an older version, your interface is going to look a little bit different, but uh, the principles of everything we're going to talk about here are the same. So now what we need to do is import that file. So we're going to say File Merge Project. Every other piece of software in the world says File Import. Cinema 4D, for some reason, wants you to merge. So, all right, we'll merge. And then we'll come back and we're going to grab this file, test2 here, and I'm going to say open. And then now it's going to ask me again, do I want to bring in layers and lights and cameras and materials and skies and anything else? Nope, we just want geometry. So I'm going to say, okay. And then here we go. We've got our geometry in here. So what did it do for us? It created a null, a folder, that is basically the name of our whole Vectorworks file, Untitled 2. And then inside of that, it made a folder called Geometry. So if we had brought in lights and cameras, they would be in their own folder. And then within Geometry, now there's another subfolder for our layer. So if we had a layer called Venue and a layer called Scenery or you know, truss, those would be in their own folders. And then inside of this, we have extrude one, uh, or extrude and extrude one. So very exciting. Um, and so there you go. Now at the, the most kind of basic level, we've uh, moved all of this stuff uh, in here. So I usually tend to get rid of this first folder. Uh, we have this sketch style tag here that we don't really need. Um, but basically, we've got our layer and we've got our geometry inside of it. So that's great. Um, and, you know, at the most basic level, this lets you get geometry kind of in from, you know, one side to the other. Okay. So let's look at a few more scenarios. I'm just going to get rid of this now. Let's jump back over here. Now, let's say... Uh, let's name this, uh, we'll call this EA layer one. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. We'll call this EA layer two. Now on this layer, uh, let's do a few different things here. So let's, uh, sure, we'll go ahead and draw a circle and I'm going to extrude this up. And then uh, maybe what we'll do here is we'll duplicate this here and we'll duplicate this again. Here we go. And then we're going to grab all of these and we're going to group them. So now we've got a group here. And then I'm going to grab a rectangle and let's extrude this up here eight feet and we'll duplicate that. And we'll just offset this here. Maybe we'll just bump this up a little bit. Just making up some stuff as we go here. So let's grab this. And now let's make this into a symbol. So let's say modify create symbol. We'll call this EA symbol one. And we'll say, okay, doesn't matter. Thank you. All right, so now we've got a few different things going on here where we have multiple layers. And on one of these layers, we have a group. And on one of these layers, uh, we also have a symbol. So um, now it doesn't matter what layer you're in and on. Again, as long as these layers are visible, then it's going to grab everything for us. So let's say export Cinema 4D. I'm going to keep the quality where it is. I'm going to keep all visible objects on all layers. That's good. If I say all visible objects on active layer, it's only going to grab this stuff. This design layer one here is going to be left behind. So that's okay. And then we're going to stay with native Vectorworks organization for now. 
And then I'm also going to make sure that export symbols as render instances is checked. This is important when we get into symbols. And then same thing. I only really care about the geometry. So we'll say export. And then uh, let's call this one test three. And we'll save that. Okay. Now we're going to jump back to Cinema 4D. So same thing. File, merge project. We're going to say test three. Now it's asking me yet again, do you want layers, lights, and cameras? We sure don't. I'm going to say, okay. And voila, now we have all of our scenery. So what did this give us this time, right? So if we twirl this open, so now we have our master folder, which is the name of our file here, which is untitled. We have a geometry folder. And if we twirl this open, you can see each one of our layers now is showing us kind of uh, as separate folders here. So this is great because it really helps us to isolate and organize on this side. Now we also have this symbols folder and uh, which is hidden from view here. The, the traffic lights in cinema are turned off for this. And, uh, and so what exactly is going on? Because I certainly see this out here and this is showing up now, and it you know it looks kind of slightly different than everything else because this is an instance. So, all right, what's happening? Let's hide this layer for a second. This layer, everything came in just like we're used to in the other one, right? So we've got our first layer, and everything behaves just like it did before. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's turn this on. So now you can see that we've got our group here, and so what this has done is it's taken these three objects, and since they're in a group, it's put it into its own folder for us. So this is great. This is just yet another way that you can kind of keep things organized when you move it over to Cinema 4D. So everything that's in a group is going to remain uh, inside of its own folder. And this is great because you can move this as a whole, um, you can add a texture to the whole thing. You can work with it, you know, kind of just like a group. But you still can drill down and have access to the individual elements inside of it. So this is great. We love this. So now, what's going on here with, with this, with this symbol, okay? So what happens with symbols is a little bit different than regular geometry. A symbol will what it'll do is it will bring in the master version of the symbol and the geometry. And it's going to put it inside a folder. It's going to put that folder at, uh, oops, sorry, like here. It's going to put that folder at zero, zero in the world. And then out here where you have your actual original piece of scenery, it's going to put what's called an instance of that. And so this is great because, you know, if you have 600 moving lights, it's going to put instances of them all along your truss or, you know, your lighting position, however you have it set up. But the actual geometry, there's only going to be one kind of master version of that. And so if we need to come in and, uh, you know, make modifications to this symbol, if we're going to get into, you know, making textures and applying them, uh, then, you know, we can do that to just the master and all of the children of this, all the instances will uh, update. So it's just like the symbol situation in Vectorworks. But this is how uh, cinema handles it, where you have kind of a master and then you have an instance. Um, or, you know, some people call this kind of a parent and a child. Um, so that's great. And, and this, we'll keep this uh, hidden here. And so then, you know, we've got the, uh, the instances. The, just the thing to keep in mind, right, is that you can't edit an instance. You can't modify it. Uh, you have to go back and do that to the master, which by default is just hidden from view. So that's super handy and we love that. So that's good. Um, another thing that's important to note with this is that, you know, all of our work traditionally inside of Vectorworks is hybrid symbols. 
And so even if you only have one version of a piece of scenery, it's going to hide it uh, at zero, zero, and it's only going to show you an instance. And so this is either good or bad, depending on what it is that you're you know, trying to do. So, all right. Uh, well, let's, I was going to get rid of this and go back, but one thing I want to note. So if we come back here and just let's just look here again at our first layer here. This now is called extrude and extrude one, which is just based on the order that I built them in. Not extremely descriptive. And in this case, it's fine because there's only two pieces of scenery and we know what it is. Once you start building more complex shows and assemblies and you know bigger things, it's going to get really confusing really fast if you just have 600 objects called extrude, extrude 1, extrude 2, extrude 600. You're going to have to do a lot of kind of hunting and pecking around inside of here to figure out what it is exactly that you're looking for. So let's get rid of this. Let's go back here. I'm going to come back here to this scene one first. And uh, here we'll just come into OpenGL, shaded view, so you can see what's going on. So here's what I recommend. You should be naming your objects before you export them. So uh, what? Like I've never named anything in Vectorworks. Well, it's really simple. I'm just going to grab this object here. And right here in the object info palette, you can see it's an extrude, which is why that was the name for it. But right at the bottom here, there's a field called name. So I'm going to name this Evans Cylinder. Did I spell it right? I think I did. Um, now, stupidly, Vectorworks engineers, thank you. If you just hit enter or return, which I'm doing, the field here is still active. So you have to actually click here in no man's land to be able to kind of drop this and, and get it. I can't tell you how many times I've selected the object. I've named this EA cube. I hit enter and then I hit the X key to try to get my direct select tool. And I'm like, what's going on? That's not working. And and then I end up with all these objects called, you know, cube X, 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 E, A, X. So just remember, type it out, and then you have to click outside of the field to kind of hit enter. I've been asking them for years to fix this, and so far, no joy. All right, so we've named this E, A, cube and Evans cylinder. That's exciting. Let's come up here, and so now let's say that this was a really complicated group. I had built, uh, I don't know, I had built an armoire and it's made out of like 75 pieces. I certainly don't want to go through and name every single one, leg one or, you know, million four, but you can actually name the whole group. So let's call this Evan's group. And so even though it's going to be full of extrude, 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 at least I'm going to have a folder now with the name of this on here. And that's usually enough for me to help kind of keep it organized and clean that way. And then last but not least, the symbol here, um, which I don't think I actually even named. Did I? I don't know that I did. Let's see here. 3D symbol. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Oh, they, it doesn't seem like I have rename on here as an option here. Come in 3D component and edit, edit symbol. It's not going to let me do it here. I think I might have to come over here, right click and choose rename. So let's just call this Evan's big symbol. Great. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Let's do this again. Export Cinema 4D. Going to keep this. Oh, by the way. Export symbols as render instances, which we just talked about. If this is unchecked, it won't do that. It'll just bring in every copy of your symbol as its own piece of geometry. And this is usually bad. So if you have 600 moving lights and this is unchecked, what you're going to end up with is 600 individual pieces of geometry. And every time you want to... I don't know, change the color of the light, you have to do that 600 times instead of it working like a symbol where there's one master that controls all the instances. So just keep an eye on that one. 
I'm going to keep everything else the same here. We're going to export this as test 04. And then let's jump back into cinema. And same thing. We're going to say file merge. And this is test 4. We don't want any of this other stuff. Here we are. So now you can see if we twirl open geometry layer 1, now I've got Evans cylinder and Evans cube. So that's great. We love that because now things are named. If we come into layer two, you're going to see that I've got Evans group. Everything inside of it is still unnamed because we didn't go through on a kind of a micro level and name things, but the group is named. And so that's enough. And that's great for us. That's brilliant. And then uh, in symbols here, we've got Evan's big symbol, right? And here's all the parts that make that up. It's hidden from view, uh, which is great. And then if we come up here to layer two, you can see right here is the instance of Evan's big symbol. So that's nice. I just killed it. Here we go. So that's great. And this gets us most of the way there for kind of what we need to do. Okay, so let's look now at an example with some actual scenery here. So here's our usual, if you've seen any of the other tutorials, you've seen this guy before here, just some walls and some doors, a little platform in there, some molding. Uh, this is a hybrid symbol. Um, so this is not a symbol like a lighting instrument where there's 6,000 of them in the scene and you know we're really concerned about the master and the instances of them. Uh, th this is just a really a one-off in the show, but still technically it's a symbol because we want it to be a hybrid in Vectorworks and take advantage of all of that. So when we export this now and say export Cinema 4D 3D only, we're going to do it slightly different in that we want to uncheck here symbol uh, export symbols as render instances because we don't want this to be a render instance. We want one version of this right where it actually lives in the world and we want it to be, you know, the actual geometry that we can, you know, kind of access. Um, and then I've also just I've changed the render mode here from final quality render works to custom. Once you change the custom, the options button opens up for you. And so I've just taken the quality here, just like uh, OpenGL, I've gone from low, medium, high, very high. I've just set everything to high. And uh, this is just going to give us a little bit more geometry in here for some of these kind of curvy moldings and kind of up the quality of it. You, you should play around with this a little bit and, and kind of see what works best for you know your geometry if you have a lot of curvy organic stuff you're going to want to definitely up the level if you're just doing kind of basic you know square stuff then you know the default settings are are fine so uh let's go ahead and export this we'll call this elevations from 3d and we'll just replace this absolutely and now let's jump over here into Cinema 4D. Whoops, looks like we've already got it there. Let's try this again. And let's say merge elevations from 3D. And this time we just want the geometry. And this is going to come in here. And so here we go. And now you can see here in this case where... It's just, you know, everything's contained inside this one folder here, but it's made up of a lot of parts and pieces. And these parts and pieces are just kind of spread out all over the place. So, you know, the chair rail is just called extrude five and, you know, the wall is this solid addition. And, um, and so, you know, you could choose to do your naming here instead of in Vectorworks. Uh, I'm just double clicking on the name of this and then, you know, typing in the new kind of name. So that's totally fine. You just have to do a little bit of kind of, you know, hunting and pecking around here. Um, let's grab this chair rail here, extrude five, and we'll just name this chair rail. Now, one thing to know, and this is, you know, there's always this annoying catch in everything I talk to you about, and this is it. In cinema... When you bring in geometry, no matter where it sits in the world, in the X, Y, or Z, its axes, the control handles, 
right? The gimbal, whatever you want to call it. It defaults to zero, 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 even though your object is over here. I don't know why it does this. And it's really annoying, <laughs> but it's okay. It's pretty easy to fix. But it's important to know that, you know, the handle is over here at zero, zero in our world, but the scenery is over here. And we want to really like just kind of move this over here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the chair rail. I'm going to come up to the tools menu under axes. And I'm just going to choose center axes two. And what that's going to do is it's just going to move this axis over so that now it's kind of right where we you know want and think it to be. And so you can do this like in bulk. So I'm going to grab a whole bunch of objects here and just say axes, center axes. And so you can see here we can do this kind of to a whole bunch of stuff all at once. And so then we get, you know, kind of our expected results that way. So just important to know. So, you know, there's definitely some cleanup work to be done here. Um, now, let's say that this was all in here and, you know, this is looking pretty nice. We don't really need this. We don't need this tag anymore here. I've got my geometry here on the scenery layer. Let's say now that we wanted to bring in, you know, these objects here from, uh, from this other scene here. So, you know, this is also scenery here. We'll get rid of uh, EA's layer two, because why not? We'll just keep this simple. Bye-bye. And so let's say this stuff now also wants to be added to the scene. Or actually even, you know what, let's do this. Let's say we've come in here and, you know, we've added some stuff here to this scene. Let's extrude this eight feet and we'll... Uh, I don't know here, we'll make this rectangle and we'll extrude this four feet. So now I'm going to grab these two objects. It's all on the same layer as this wall. And so I'm going to say model, sorry, file, export, uh, Cinema 4D. This time I'm just going to choose selected objects on active layer because that's all we want. And we're going to keep this all exactly the same. And then, you know, we'll call this elevations from 3D, you know, part two. And hopefully now it should have just grabbed those. Now, here's my recommendation. Instead of trying to import this into here, you should import this into a new file and then copy and paste over because you just never know what mess you're going to kind of, you know, potentially, you know, bring in and introduce into the system here. So let's let's just see here. So if we open this up and um, it's brought in, you know, all this stuff, and all, we don't really care about all this other stuff. It's actually not too bad, but if this was, you know, kind of a more complicated system, all we really want is this stuff. We want these two extrudes. So I'm going to grab both of them. I'll go ahead and say, you know, center axes too. And then with these, I'm going to copy these to my clipboard. And then we'll switch over. Uh, where are we working here? We're working here. And then I'm just going to paste these in here. We'll drop them into the geometry. And so now I've got them together. So when you start adding things, changing things, you know, modifying, you know, maybe you're changing just this door, you don't need to re-import the whole scene, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at moving something a little bit larger here. Let's get like a full set here, a full show kind of going. So here we are back in Washington, D.C., and we've got a few layers here, overhead scenery, house seating, stage, and bleachers or you know, the 3D venue. So I've got all of my 3D here. Nice. I'm going to come back in the top plan, though it doesn't really matter. And we'll say file, export, Cinema 4D, 3D only. And uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, again, I'm going to change this from final quality render works to custom render works. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set this options, the quality levels all to high, right? There's a lot of curved stuff in here. I want to make sure that this comes through nice. I'm going to keep the native vector works organization. I only am concerned in this case about geometry because I don't have textures and materials and any of that stuff. And I do want my symbols to come in as render instances. And so we'll say export. 
we'll just you can name this if you want I'm gonna keep it named in the file name I'm gonna replace I did this before and that's it it's spit it out pretty quick here let's jump up back over to cinema we've got a fresh scene here and we'll just say file merge project drafting layout DNC I don't care about anything except geometry here and we'll say okay and then if it all worked out well it looks like it worked out pretty well here we have our scene and so if we break this down right it's put all of our symbols a copy of all of our symbols hidden here right in the middle of the world and then our geometry should be broken into these buckets based on our layers so again this is great because it's organizing things you know all the 3d bleachers here which were on their own layer I can just turn those off or uh, let's see overhead scenery is usually in my way so uh, now I can really you know kind of work and if I'm working on the set I don't need to see all these chairs as lovely as they are so we can just turn off the house seating and then you know here we are we're kind of into all of this stuff right and so this is great um, so the only thing worth noting here is um, you know the video tiles here there's you know hundreds of them and so it's great that this is a symbol and that you know at zero zero there's one tile and then all of these are just you know instances of my video tiles which you know totally makes sense to us stairs on the other hand for example here there's only one version of these stairs here and this too is showing up as an instance now why is that well because even though there's only one of these in vector works this is still a symbol because it's a hybrid symbol because you know we love hybrid symbols and so what's happening is it's actually putting a version of this at zero zero and then it's putting an instance of this out here on the floor but there's only one grand staircase. And so, um, so we don't need this to be a symbol and an instance. We can just make this into the regular geometry. So if I just select this, now I'm gonna hit the shortcut key C, as in caret, uh, and that is going to make this editable. And so what's happened then is that now this has actually become uh, like real geometry where I can, you know, kind of come in and work on it. Technically, there is still a symbol for it here somewhere. Uh, Grand Stairs 4-7. But uh, we don't need this anymore because this is no longer an instance of that. So we can come in here and get rid of it. So I realize this is slightly confusing. Usually the idea of having a master symbol and then instances spread out everywhere, this makes sense for us. This is great for the video wall. When it comes down to you have a hybrid symbol of you know one piece of scenery like the show deck, it doesn't actually make sense for us to have this be an instance. You could keep it that way, but you'd be annoyed every time you wanted to work with it and make a change because you actually should be working on the master symbol. So I would come in here and again hit the C key to make this editable. And now, you know, this is back to being nice, good old geometry. Just remember to go into your symbol folder here and, you know, kind of find what was this 78 inch deck. We don't need this symbol anymore, so I can kind of get rid of it. It's a little clunky, I'm not gonna lie, okay? It's not like a totally perfect workflow in this world here, but, um, but it's close, you know, and, uh, and that's okay. All right, I know it's a little confusing, right? So, uh, so hopefully this helps you with all of your different scenarios, at least to kind of get stuff into Cinema 4D. Okay, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into production design in Cinema 4D, but uh, to start out, you need good geometry. And so there you go. Thanks everyone, talk to you soon.